first opened back in 2012. We're live inside the cavernous Marlins Park in Miami. We celebrate Jackie Robinson Day with a great matchup between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Miami Marlins. It's going to be a premier pitching matchup. Two of the league's hardest throwers go head to head next. Jose Arena, a right-handed native of the Dominican Republic, will be the starter. Dan, any thoughts? Hey, Matt, five full innings for this guy in his last one. You couldn't really consider that a powerhouse outing. He was able to get a no decision, but I'm sure he and the team are looking for a lot more in this one today. Josh Harrison stands in. He will lead this one off today. Leading off the afternoon for Pittsburgh, go, second baseman, Josh Harrison. First pitch of the at bat. Underway now in the Sunday finale as the game's first pitch is taken for bowl one. These Marlins as they take the field this afternoon. They come in in the midst of a stretch where they've dropped six of their last nine. Hey this is a big one here Matty. You know what d -Row? They're about to head on a nine game roadie. One thing they'd like to do get on that plane feeling good about themselves and salvage the last game of the series. Yeah Dan they need to find a way to win this one today. Get on the flight makes everybody's dinner taste better. Nine game road trip coming up. A lot of packing involved. A lot of grinding on the road. They need to find a way to win this last one at home. Too high and it's three and oh. Well he was definitely looking fastball here and he got one but that was good discipline to lay off and get himself into a 3 0 count. And now look out as that runs in and gets him and a very interesting start to this one. Well there's no strategic reason to hit the leadoff man that I can think of so now he's aboard with no outs to start the game and that's not how you want to get your outing underway on the mound. And that'll bring in Adam Frazier. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. Love the fact that he's not scared to go right back inside with another fastball. I know he hit the last guy, but if he's going to have success, he's got to establish that pitch in. Harrison on at first, nobody out. That's taken now, and it's 2 and 0 to the Pirates shortstop. He's having a really hard time finding his rhythm and finding the strike zone. It's going to allow this offense to keyhole him in big situations. He's got to figure it out pretty quick. Now the 2 0 home. He turns on it and sends it deep down the line in right. And that is off the wall in right field. Harrison. Rounds the corner and is headed home. And he's safe at the plate as they take the lead. Lachey's are around for a reason. And that hit right there is a reason they say baseball is a game of inches, right? Just barely fair, but that's not much consolation to the guy standing on the mound. Nice RBI two-bagger. Josh Bell the next to hit as the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball one and oh batting average down in the low two tens three homers and six RBIs. The one and oh delivery skied in the air to straightaway left under it is the left fielder one away. And the runner, not tagging, will retreat to second base. A chance here to check out the starting lineup for the visiting Pirates. Danny, any thoughts? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Jay Hay, Josh Harrison do his thing. He's on a nice stretch. That's three home runs in his last 10 games. He's swinging the bat really well right now. And by watching his mannerisms in the box, he just looks comfortable in the plate. He's in some kind of a groove. Next to bat will be the Pittsburgh cleanup batter, Sean Rodriguez. And the Pirates trying to make this first inning even more productive here. Here comes the first pitch. And the first pitch is a slider here, but that's chopped foul at the plate.
Nothing in two count and the pitch. Pitch swung on and hit in the air toward the line in right. And that's a fair ball. Tack on another here as the runner scores from second. Up next for the Buckos, Jordy Mercer. First shot for him here with a runner at first now and one away. First pitch on its way. Offered at and missed. Here's the throw. The tag by Castro, and he's out at second base. Not every catcher can make that throw, so that was pretty special. Benito Santiago made throwing from his knees famous when he was playing, but it's a really tough one to pull off. That's a long throw without any legs underneath you, so hats off to him on that one. Bases are empty here with two men out. Tried to work it back to that low inside corner, but it misses one and two. And that's his strikeout pitch right there. You know, you'll see a lot of guys swing right over the top of that one. But in this situation, he was able to hold back. That's a nice take. Yeah. The bouncer to the left side. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. So they get a couple of runs on two hits, no errors, and no one left aboard. We'll move on to the bottom half of inning number one. It's the Pirates 2, the Marlins coming up. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Jamison Tyon, a right-hander from Florida, gets the ball as the starter here. What do you have for us on him, Danny? Matt, this guy is a big power arm. Former first-round draft pick by the Pittsburgh Pirates. And listen, he's what they look like. Big, strong guy. Three pitch mix, 95 to 97 miles an hour with good life on his fastball. Overhand curveball and a straight changeup. The key to him, throwing strikes. If he's throwing strikes early, expect him to go deep into the game, and he could rack up a pile of strikeouts. Takes a knee-high fastball. And, guys, as we take a look at the Pirates coming into this afternoon, they do come in off a victory last time out, but they've really hit the skids here recently. Losers of eight of their last ten ball games. Matty, we've seen some good baseball in the first two games that is set, and expect another close one here. Both of the first two games decided by one run. You know, D.R., when you get in these series like this, when one run means so much, you like to be able to be the team to score first, but both these games have been very close, and it's going to boil down to who gets the big hits in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. Smoke toward the hole, and that is through into right field for a single. So the leadoff hitter reaches with good speed. The two-hole hitter can handle the bat. We'll see if they have a play on here with nobody out. There's a lot of moving parts in some guys' swings. It usually takes them a month or so to get it ironed out. Standing in now, JT Real Muto. Fastball and ooh, that ran in and drilled him. Man, not sure if he was trying to send a message early in the game or what, but I sure hope this doesn't carry over to the rest of the game. Sometimes things like this early in the game really sets the tone for problems later, but I hope that's not the case. Here's Starlin Castro, and he's looking to make something happen here with two on and nobody out. Well, early in the count, expect him to look for a ball to drive. If he gets two strikes against him, he'll need to change his plan and focus on moving the runners up. This game is too close to get greedy. First pitch on its way. Swing and a miss just behind a lively fastball. I heard so many pitchers in my career in the dugout talk about you're only one pitch away from getting out of a nasty situation. This is perfect right here. A strikeout or a double play, and he can get right back in control of this inning. The 0-1 on its way. And there's one well above the zone for a ball. Maben on second. Riamuto at first with no outs. High 
high fly ball out to straightaway center. Loop low has to roam straight back, but he has it for the first down. And he'll move up to third now. Runners at the corners here with one away. Time now for a glance at the Marlins lineup card in this one. Dan Blizak, who you focused on? Well, they could really use a turnaround from Cameron Maven. Watching his last game, he went 0 for 4, and it just looks like he's out of sync right now. Maybe this game is the game that gets him going. Ready now for the Marlins, Justin Bohr. He's ready for his first at bat of this early season contest. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Ball one. This is the guy they're going to have to be careful with. He could put three runs on the board in a hurry. So expect them to try to get him to chase something out of the zone if they can. Lays off a fastball that doesn't miss by much, and it's 2-0. and And there are the umpires assigned to this one. Balls and strikes belong to Mr. Jerry Hillsdale. You know, Dero, I think Jerry Hillsdale is a very good hitter's umpire. Doesn't give much on the edges. He's going to make you put the ball over the plate. Oh, I love me some Jerry Hillsdale. You have to come over those 17 inches. He ain't giving you anything on the outside corner, and that's the way it should be. 3 and 0 to him now. Runners are at first and third, one away. He loses him on ball four. I think he was trying to be a little too fine there, and a walk is the result. Well, the good news is he has a force at every base. The bad news? A single probably drives in a couple of runs. Coming to the plate now, Tim Beckham. His batter pitcher line against Jamison Tyone. He's a 333 hitter. First delivery to him on the way. And a neck high fastball that time. This year against right handed pitching, Beckham is below the Mendoza line. The batting average under 200, unfortunately. Yeah, Maddie, he's well aware of it. Runners in scoring position, that's where you need to be on your game. He's just expanded the zone entirely too much in these situations. Good zip on that one as he just throws it by him for strike one. I don't blame the batter for pulling the trigger right there. Those fastballs light up your eyes, and you can occasionally do damage with them. But he wasn't able to catch up with that one. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. And he takes one off the inside corner for ball two. Well, when the pressure starts to intensify, it often feels like the strike zone gets harder and harder to hit. This is a big spot here. The 2-1. Swung on and missed for strike number two. Yeah, I think that's the idea, Matt. But he might spin the win if he starts looking for it in there. Ready on two balls and two strikes. Here it comes. Fly ball right down the line in left. The catch is made near the line in left, tagging the runner from third. And the runner from third crosses the plate. It's now a two to one ball game. Obviously, he's hoping for more up there with the bases loaded, but you can't be too upset with the sack fly. Up next from Miami, number 42. And the Marlins looking for more in the game's opening frame. Here comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. Fastball down near the shoe tops. Two men are on with two men out. And this is hit hard to the right side. Foul. Now the one and one pitch. Takes a pass and misses. That's strike two.
The one two. Looked at for ball number two. Here now the two two. This is line to left. That's in there. Base hit. And this will not be close, and the run will score easily. Boy, there are big RBIs and big base hits, Dero, but none more than with two outs. A big two-out knock right there. Not only ties things up, but keeps the inning going as well. Yeah, just a great approach right there by the batter. You never know when your number's going to be called. You always want to pass the baton to the next guy behind you. Take the donut off your bat and trust in the teammate behind you. That is a huge knock and keeps the line moving. And next to the plate will be J.T. Riddle as he lays off a fastball too low for ball one. Two down runners at first and second. Fastball right over the inside corner. Ready with the 1 1 pitch. Way outside, nearly to the backstop. 2 and 1. His pitch count is getting up there in the inning now. He needs to get this frame over with sooner than later, so. Forcing contact and getting the defense involved is probably the best thing he can do. Come on now, let's go. The 2 1. And he fouls this one off. A 2 and 2 count. Here's the pitch. Line drive the left. And that's in there. Base hit. Four. Rounds third and is digging for the plate. Now it's cut off. A throw to the plate. And they're not going to get him. He's in there at the plate. Boy, that has to feel good as a hitter, Dior. You get that base hit to give your team the lead. You have to feel good when you get down to first base. Yeah, it's just a nice approach. You see him turn to his boys right there and get fired up with the dugout. 100%. Not trying to do too much. Able to quiet the moment down, center himself, and come through in a big spot. And that'll bring in the multi-dimensional Lewis Brinson. Three across so far in the inning, and another two out there on base. Yeah, Matt, and this inning's really starting to get away from them on the defensive side of the ball. Stranding the rest of those guys out here feels absolutely essential for them at this point. He's set, and the pitch. Ground ball sent back up the middle. A dive, but he can't get it. It's through into the outfield. And the run will score from second as they double him up now. It's four to two. You know what I like right there, Dan, is the batter's approach. Not trying to do too much, just taking it right back up to shoot again, staying within himself, and just knowing that anything to the outfield gets him an RBI. Now that's a good piece of hitting. That's a great point, Dior. I think a lot of times hitters go up there trying to do a little bit too much. Sometimes you just have to go ahead and hit the ball where it's pitched, and a good job, and a run batted in. Stepping in now, Jose Arena, as he looks at a fastball that misses off the plate for ball one. As a manager, when you see a guy struggling like this in the first thing, your mind starts racing trying to figure out about how long you're going to go with this guy and how many guys you might end up having to use out of your bullpen just to get through this thing. Not a good spot to be in. 2-0 oh, now. Riddle over at second. Brinson on at first with two down. The count now at two and one. Now the two one pitch. Swing and a ground ball to third. Taken in by Mercer. Throw to second for the force out and his side is retired. Nine men come to the plate, four score. 
and second inning coming up here in South Florida. It's the Marlins four and the Pirates two. Leading off the inning, Jordan Luplo, and they'll Pittsburgh. need him to get something Shutter going Gilbert. here. Hey, we're still in the early stages of this one. They're only down by a couple of runs, but it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. Hit the other way out toward right field. In there, a base hit. With that, the Buckos have their leadoff man aboard to kick off the inning. And he will make it all the way to third now as that mistake proves a costly one indeed. So problems out there in right field as this is going to wind up going as an E9. Digging in, Chris Bostic. He'll get to take his first cuts here. First pitch coming, here it is. And that slider's almost in the dirt. Arena has been having himself quite a year so far, toting a sub-3 ERA. He's undoubtedly been one of the league's best. I know everyone loves the long ball Matty but this is why I pay the price of a ticket right here two of the game's best two of the hardest throwers competing at the top of their game Dan you have to love this stuff you know D -Row, we thought coming into this one it was going to be a low scoring affair both of these pitchers look like they're locked in early and runs are going to be really difficult to come by they both look like they're on point so far. Two and zero count and the pitch, and he's in front of a tight little slider that time. Runner at third here, nobody out. Took a good cut that time, but comes up empty. Two and two. So he threw the slider darting away to him two times in a row. Now I don't think he'll go for it again. I'm looking for something hard inside on this pitch. And a good bite to that slider as he swings through it for the first out of the inning. All right, here's the defensive alignment for the Miami Marlins. And guys, when I've been looking at the numbers on this starting pitcher, what really jumps out on me is the fact that he doesn't strike a ton of guys out, which means he's got to execute. He's got to use those 17 inches in, out, up, and down. He's going to have his defense behind him. They better be on their toes because a lot of balls are going to be put in play in this one. So the next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Elias Diaz, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. He's set. Here it comes. Leads a slider up high, but it's taken for a strike. One out and a runner on third. Swing and a miss as they got him with the slider there, two away. That strikeout changes the whole complexion of the inning. He was definitely pitching for it with a runner on third and one out, and he got it. Now it's going to take a hit or something like a wild pitch to get that guy home. In now, Jamison Tyon. Back up the middle and in for a base hit. And the runner from third crosses the plate. Dan, as a former infielder, I apologize for him. Nothing's more frustrating or upset you more as a defender than making an error and seeing that guy come around to score. It, it, you know what? And that's one of those cases as a pitcher, D. Rowe. There's not much you can do. Listen, there are physical and there are mental errors, and you just have to, as a pitcher, go ahead and look past that now and try to pick up your teammate and try to get it out any way you can. And a high strike there, 0 and 1. This is where you got to take stock in the situation. Adjust your batting gloves and realize you need a gapper to score this guy from first. If nothing less, pass the baton to the guy behind you and keep the line moving. Very weakly on the ground. That winds up foul. Harrison, five foot eight inch right handed swinger and thrower. This is the final year of his current deal, so he'll be a free agent at season's end. 
You know, Matty, I know he's in the final year of his contract, but he's playing to expectations, to be honest with you. I know he, need, he wants to turn it up a little bit, though, as he approaches the end of the season and make that salary push as he heads towards free agency again. Liner towards second. And that'll get down for a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. Dan, he's got to find a way to get himself out of this. This is constant traffic, and here he finds himself in the second with two outs, and he's still giving up knocks. Boy, it's about trying to limit the pitch count also. Only in the second inning here, and his pitch count's getting up, up, up. He's had a lot of traffic on the bases, so he really needs to get out of this one right here. And that'll bring in Adam Frazier. 0-1 the count. Pulled toward right center field. And this is going to find the alley as he might have himself his second double of the ball game. And the runner will score from second. Throw won't get him. With that base hit right there, D. Rowe, that's his third RBI of the game. More importantly, his team's now ahead. Yeah, these are the special ones. He's had a great approach all day. He's battled his tail off, and he's given his team single handedly almost given his team a chance to win this one. Josh Bell the next to hit as he'll pop this one foul off to the left and out of play. Frazier at third with two away. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the 0-2 pitch. And he strikes him out here, so he's able to stop the bleeding a bit as the side is retired. So three runs on four base hits, one error, and a runner left. On now to the bottom of the second. It's the Pirates five and the Marlins four. Leading off the inning, Cameron Maven as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. Cameron Maven. First offering on its way. Swing and a miss way behind the big fastball. The wind up and the 0 1. Swung on and missed, outclassed by that fastball for a strike. Two mid 90s fastballs and you're down 0 2. This is where you got to take a deep breath and pot commit. You're either all in on another fastball. Are you finding a way to stay back to attack something off speed? There's a fastball that just misses ball one. Wow, that's a tough pitch to take. 0-2 fastball just off the corner, and I mean just off the corner. The one-two. Soft liner out toward left center. And that's in for his second hit of the afternoon. Hey, the offense did their homework coming into this one. There's another leadoff knock in a second. That makes five. That makes five hits already for these guys. Into the box, JT Real Muto. As he'll swing at the first pitch and bang one into right center field. That's a base hit. And he's safe. Danny, how frustrating is this right here? First and third, you got problems all over. Well, you come right out the dugout, right? You're starting and hitting fresh. You're expecting to have a one two three inning. You look up, and all of a sudden, first and third, nobody out. It's time to make some good pitches. Into the box now, Starlin Castro. As the first pitch here's a bit high, it's ball one. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Yeah. 
the 1 0. Misses, ball two. Runners at the corners here, nobody out. Two balls and a strike. Two balls, one strike. The 2 1 home. Drilled on the ground is short. Oh, what a play! There's one on the first, the double play. It certainly looked like they might have had a big inning cooking there with first and third and no outs, but the double play kind of kills it. They did get the run in, but the batter doesn't get credit for an RBI. Standing in now, Justin Bohr. So go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. Drew a base on balls his first time up. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Another one fouled off, and he's quickly behind 0 and 2. The 0 2 home. Thought he had the inside corner that time, but it missed for ball one. That's the kind of pitch that reminds me of many reasons why I wasn't a very good hitter. This thing was inside and coming in hot, and he just gave a stone cold take. I'm bailing out of the way if I'm in the box, no doubt about it. Swing and a miss for strike three. Pulled the string on him that time, and the inning is over. Marlins get one here on a couple of hits. We played two full, and we are all tied five to five. A great shot there of the blue waters in long sandy stretches of Miami Beach. Back now for the top of the third inning on the show. Leading off for Pittsburgh. So now it'll be the four hole hitter, Sean Rodriguez. He came through with an RBI single in his last at bat. First pitch of the at bat. Knee high slider that he takes a look at. There's no way around it. This has been a rough start on the mound, so it'll be interesting to see how long that man is going to let him go. Maybe he settles in and can give you another inning or so, but I wouldn't bet on it at this point. A count of one and one to the Pirates' first baseman. The one one. Is laid off for ball two. The two one. Grounded back up the middle. Riddle has it. Throw to first in time, and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. So one gone now as you take a look there at the standings in the National League East, and you see where the Marlins find themselves entering play today. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Jordy Mercer. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. First delivery to him on the way. Leaves a slider right over the middle. Stuff has never been a problem with this pitcher. It's execution and location that has always been his bugaboo. And that's exactly what happened here. I know he's ahead 0 1, but he's finding the heart of the plate way too often. And the slider stayed low apparently for a ball. And he takes a cold strike two. Bases are empty one man out. Popped up. Riddle shading to his right two gone. Now Digging in for his second at bat, Jordan Luplo. He reached on a single in his first try. All right, guys, let's do it. Come on. First pitch coming. Here it is. Strike. Takes a high fastball for a strike. Yeah, I'm shocked he let that first pitch go right there. High fastball, but usually those ones travel the furthest.
Oh one count. Here's the pitch. And it's fouled away. Two out nobody on. And a wasted pitch there one and two. The one two. Right side but it's going to be a foul ball. Ball two. Liner towards second but this won't get over the second baseman's glove as he's got it to end the inning. Down in order go the Pirates. This remains a five all ball game. Standing in, Tim Beckham earned himself an RBI with a sack fly his last time at the plate. Tim Beckham. First pitch on its way. Laid off as it caught the inside corner. Ready with the nothing in one pitch. This is swung on and lifted down the left field line, but it'll get back into the crowd as he jumps ahead of him now. 0 and 2. Swing and a miss as he starts the third, the same way he ended the second with a punch out, one away. This pitching staff has done a really good job against this guy in this series. This is a really good hitter, and it's not easy to make a guy strike out five times in a series up to this point, but that's what they've done to this guy so far. In now, number 42. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. A base hit in his first trip. Oh and one here it comes. Hey. A change up that just catches the bottom of the zone for a strike. Into the wind up here comes the 0 2 pitch. And a waste pitch there one and two. One out nobody on. And this is lying softly to the left side. But this is a foul ball. The one two. Is taken for ball two. The two two. Now a swing and a softly hit ground ball. And that's the second out. Digging in. JT Riddle. He singled his last time up. Here comes the first pitch. And a fastball just a bit up. Sinking liner toward left. And that's in there. So perhaps some life here with two men out. So some two out success, and the bottom of the third frame will continue. Last pitch was a fastball. Tries to double up with the same piece of cheese, and it gets turned around. Nice piece of hit. Stepping in now, Lewis Brinson. As he'll look at a fastball in there on the outer half, it's 0-1. One. one for one after a single this first time up. Ah. 
Oh, and look out as this runs in and gets him. The second man he's plunked in this one. Well, as a pitcher, you never want to hit a guy, but he's been struggling early, and the hitters have owned the inside part of the plate, so maybe this will help him reclaim the inner half and start to become more effective. Has to command it in there, though. Coming to the plate now, the pitcher for the Marlins, Jose Arena. Two on, two out for him here in the third. Looking to wiggle out of this, here it is. Here's a two-seamer inside to start the at-bat. It's 1-0. and oh. Set and the 1 0 pitch. Well, the fastball that just misses inside. Can't allow yourself to lose focus right here with the pitcher up. Got to stay on the attack. Minimize pitches against these guys and put them away early. Cold strike on the change, 2 and 1. Riddle at second, Brinson at first, two out in the inning. Zero. Swung on and missed, and it's even at two and two. Here now the two two is a swing and a miss. That's strike three. Marlins strand a pair. Our score holds at five apiece. Now at the play, Chris Bostic comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Right fielder, Chris Bostic. Here's the first pitch to him. That's a Missed with a slider. Bostic, a 25 year old. He's in his rookie year here at the big league level. Fastball misses badly there, and he's behind 2 0. Oh. 2 0 count, the pitch. Hit down the third baseline, but this will get foul 2 and 1. To two and two now. Change up. Called strike three as he rolls his eyes at the call. One away. Well, that call looked like it was a little in the pitcher's favor, but it wasn't outrageous. Hey, listen, calling balls and strikes is a really tough job, and even the best are going to miss some from time to time, especially when they're sort of borderline like that last one. Not sure the hitter would want to hear that, though. Elias Diaz, the next to hit, as he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. Five runs, six hits, and no errors so far for the Pirates. A ball and a strike. You know, you think it's an eight hole hitter right there. You shouldn't be taking that fastball, and you're right. But when you got the pitcher hitting behind you, you sometimes sit off speed because that's the pitch you're usually going to get. The pitcher does not want to get beat by you, and he's not afraid to walk you and hand it over to an AB against the pitcher. A wave and a miss, a tick behind a good fastball. Now a swing and a weak little line drive over to first. And this will get taken in at first for the second out of the inning. Jameson Tyon. Stepping in and ready for another shot. Jamison Tyon looking to follow up the RBI single from his first at bat. 
first pitch of the at bat. A changeup over the inside corner. Little dribbler down the line. Moore loves it, and he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the Pirates. This ball game still tied 5 all. Digging in and looking for more, Cameron Maven. Two hits and two trips for him thus far. Cameron Maven. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Just a bit high that time as he misses for a ball. And facing right handed pitching so far this season, Maven averages a hit once every four at bats and average at exactly 250. Now the 1 0 is taken, strike one. The 1 1 home. Swung on and missed, and that's strike two. Got him to chase after the curveball below the zone there. That was a really nice pitch, and it can be a really tough one to lay off of as a hitter. Just got a piece up the line. Throws in time, and that's out number one. Now batting. Catherine. Riding in once again, JT Real Muto. Last time through was a base hit. Here comes the first pitch. And this one's not close. It's in the dirt for ball one. Five runs, seven hits, and one error so far for the Marlins. In there, and it's even at one. High, two and one now. Soft liner towards short, and that'll be the second out. Now batter, second baseman, Starlin Castro. Digging in once again, Starlin Castro, 0 for 2 on the afternoon so far. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Hit hard on the ground to second. That's through, and he's got his first base hit. He's one for three. So we'll go a little deeper into the bottom of the fourth as that extends the inning. There's a hard hit ground ball. Pitcher not able to get a glove on it. Hard single up the middle. Yeah, watch your lips right there, Dad. Set it back right where it came from. Into the box, Justin Bohr. As he'll take a look at ball one. Bohr, playing here in his age 29 season. His contract is set to expire at the end of this season, so he may end up hitting the market this winter. Hey, I think if you ask this guy honestly how his season's gone so far, he'd tell you he's not happy with it. It's been kind of an average year for him, but he has time to get hot and make that salary push. 2 0 now. Two balls and a strike to Boar. Now the 2 1 takes a pitch for strike number two. Ball misses high and away there. It's full three and two. Full count with two outs now. So if he could put the ball in the gap somewhere, he could have a good shot of driving in a run because the run at first will be in motion. Oh, 
Now the three and two pick. And a good at bat that time as he lays off for ball four. And as a result, that'll move a runner up into scoring position now with two away. Well, he made quick work of the first two guys this half inning, getting two quick outs, but then he gives up a base hit and now the walk. We'll see if he has it in him to draw the line in the sand and get out of this. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Now here's one hit in the air to the right side. And a diving effort, but it's out of his reach. A foul ball. Oh. And he lays off for ball one. Now it looks like a right-hander's up and throwing in the Pittsburgh bullpen. Castro on second. Four on at first with two down. Inside here with the hard stuff, and it's two and one now. A lot of times you see guys get too aggressive and try to do too much at the plate with guys on, but right here he's doing a great job of waiting on the right pitch. Got himself ahead in the count now. He's set and the two one pitch. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Rodriguez will reach out with one hand to make the catch on the move, and that ends the inning. Marlon Strand a pair. This remains a five-all ball game. Josh Harrison stands in. He scored after reaching on a single in his last time up. Josh Harrison. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Left center, base hit. Hey, another leadoff knock right there. This game has been full of offense, full of traffic on the base pass. Let's see who's going to get that big double in the gap to clear. And that'll bring in Adam Frazier. As he'll look at a slider that runs in too far for ball one. So earlier in the broadcast, we mentioned that we were going to see a pitcher's duel here today. Yeah, Dan, I'm a little taken aback by this. I thought we were going to have a low-scoring game like Maddie just attested to. But the offense, let's tip our hat. Some guys were missing locations, and they didn't miss the heater. You know what, Dero? This just goes to show you, no matter how you look at a paper before this started, we both thought that this was going to be a low-scoring affair. Two really good now pitches. That it. hasn't been the case. When you think you have it figured out, you haven't come close to figuring any of it out. Josh Bell the next to hit. Runner to the at bat on its way. A little bouncer. Runner at first here one man out. And it's one and one. Popped him up. And he'll stay with it to put it away as they get their man here for the second out. How about it? Left fielder. Ready for another Sean shot now. Rodriguez. Sean Rodriguez. He's one for two in this one. From the stretch. Here's a first pitch changeup that swung on and chopped foul right at home plate. Now a move over to first. Runner back safely. Two out with the man at first. Off the plate. One ball, one strike. Now a throw over to first and a dive but he's back in.
He's set. Here comes the 1 1. Good change up that time, but he wouldn't bite on it. Seared down the first baseline. But this will be a foul ball as that evens things at 2 and 2. Little guessing game going on right now. Being late on that fastball after the change, he had to be sitting off speed right there. He stays alive, still 2 and 2. The 2 2 one more time. Fouled off. And they're working the outer half here, but that one's wide for ball three. All right, three two count with two outs. The runner on first will be moving, so we'll see what happens. There are a lot of possible outcomes with this kind of play. And that misses ball four, so it's first and second now with two out. He did not want to let the hitter off the hook with two outs, and now he's got a runner in scoring position to deal with. Jordy Mercer. Ready for another chance? Jordy Mercer. He was retired after popping out in his last at bat. First offering on its way. First pitch is a fastball inside, 1 0. Harrison over at second. Rodriguez at first, two out in the inning. And he watches one miss outside, 2 0 now. Got to find a way to execute either a good fastball down the way or flip something off speed for a strike. You cannot miss over the harder plate in these situations. The hitter is on high alert. Now the 2 0 home, 3 and 0 now. Well, two on, two outs, and he's got himself in a great hitter's count. He just has to be careful not to get too aggressive. A walk would be good here, too. Three one, the count to the Pirates shortstop. To first scooped up and the two out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. Pirates strand a couple. Our score holds at five apiece. <laughs> Digging in to try it again. Number 42 a hit in two tries so far. Number 42. First pitch coming, here it is. And he just misses with a curveball. Well, he's still out there to start the fifth inning, but it's been a real grind of a start for him. The pitch count is much higher than he'd like it to be, so it's hard to imagine him working really deep into this game. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Rodriguez is over, and he hauls it in for the first out of the inning. Now batting. Hey, hey, Riddle. Ready once again, JT Riddle. He steps in off a base hit in his last at bat. First delivery to him on the way. Hey. Takes a knee high fastball. Pulled toward right center field. Luplo over to his left. Two down. Now, now with the play, Lewis Brinson. Last time up, he was hit by a pitch. Here's the pitch. And that's in there for strike one. Love that pitch right there. And he executed it perfectly. A big arcing curveball that starts at the batter's hip and then just 
bends onto the inside corner. A lot of hitters have a tendency to open up way too early, and they can't make good contact on that pitch. Counts even at one and one to Lewis Brinson. From the windup, the one one pitch. And there's ball two now. Bases are empty here with two men out. Oh, and not an easy pitch to lay off of, but he did somehow, and he's got it to three and one. We're starting to see a lot more balls from him now, and that's a direct result of him getting hit around pretty good. He's trying to do something different, and it's resulting in him not tacking the strike zone anymore. And this is taken low for ball four, and they'll have themselves a two-out base runner here after all. Well, he walked him on five pitches, but that last pitch was really good. He missed down, but only by a hair. When a hitter has a 3-1 count, he can wait until he gets a pitch he loves. Derek Dietrich will look for some two-out magic here as he'll pinch hit with two gone and a runner at first. Pitch out, nothing doing. A runner on first with two away. And that one stayed too low, apparently. It's one thing to get hit around, but it's far worse when you're getting yourself into trouble by not throwing strikes. Every pitcher's been there, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating or unacceptable. Now the 2-0 home. And now a pitch hit sharply on the ground. But a foul ball, and it's 2-1 and one now. But this will wind up a foul ball. 2-2. Two and two. Here now the 2-2. Round ball foul down the left side. Fastball didn't miss by much, and it's a full count now, three and two. What we're seeing here is a really smart at bat. They got to be thinking the man on the mound is getting a little short on gas, so. When you go up there and make him throw a bunch of pitches, you're more likely to get a good pitch to hit or at least force him out of the game. A big uppercut there as he popped this straight up. Mercer is there. And that's the third out. So they pick up no runs on no hits, no errors, and one man left on. We're through five here at the ballpark, and we are all tied five to five. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Marlins, number 42, Harley Gardner. So the next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Jordan Luplo, a hit in two tries for him so far. Pitch on the way. Line drive to left. Number 42 is there, and he'll bring this one in. Jumped all over that first pitch of the inning, and he didn't miss it. Just wasn't able to steer it in a direction that resulted in a leadoff hit. Into the box now, Chris Bostic. He'll take a look at a pitch too low. It's ball one. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game so far. The 1 0 is an off speed pitch taken for a ball. We've seen him go down on strikes more than once in this game, so this has been a better approach by him at this at bat. Much more patient, and he's gotten himself into a good hitter's count. And there's a swing and a miss, 2 and 1 now. The 2 1. Makes him swing and miss on a ball out of the zone for strike two. 
I love the fact that this batter continues to be aggressive, but after striking out twice already, maybe he's got to take a step back, see the ball a little bit deeper, and be willing to work deep into the count. Now a fastball inside, and he works it back to a full count now. The 3 2 pitch. Swing and a line drive, but foul. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming up. Here's a looping fly ball out to right. Mabin moving in. He's got it, and there are two down now. Now batting. Up next for the Buckos, Elias Diaz. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. And that one just missed outside. Two out, nobody on. And that one misses upstairs, 2 and 0. Now the 2 0 home. Outside, 3 and 0 now. Well, he knows it. But this is the kind of guy you just have to go right after. He's not the biggest threat with the bat, so it's time to challenge him right here. And he gets this fastball over back to three and one now. The three and one pitch. And this one misses high for ball four, and they have themselves a two out base runner. Up next for the Pirates. Colin Moran. The look for some two out magic here is he'll pinch hit with two gone and a runner at first. Colin Moran. On the ground to the left side. And as it turns out, the two out walk doesn't come around to haunt him as that ends the inning. One left for Pittsburgh. This ball game still tied 5 all. Kyle Crick enters to do the pitching in the bottom of the sixth. Number 42, Kyle Crick. Here's Cameron Mabin now. So far, two for three in this one. Right fielder, Cameron Mabin. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. A fastball right down the middle for a strike. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right-handers starting to loosen up. One and one to the Marlins leadoff hitter. Two and one. Ready to deal. Here's the two one. The count now at two and two. And he lays off, so it's full now, three and two. JT Real Muto will be next. Hit in the air down the right field line. Busted on the move. He gets there to make the play for the first out of the inning. Ready now for the Marlins. JT Real Muto. He singled in two trips to the plate thus far. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And the slider stayed low apparently for a ball. Now the 1 0. A swing and a miss, strike one. 
He's going to need to shorten up and get that foot down a little bit earlier if he hopes to be catching up to that fastball. The 1-1. One, one. Fouled away. towards second and there's out number two up next for the Marlins second baseman Starlin Castro. up next for Miami Starlin Castro he's working on a one for three thus far first pitch of the at bat and there's a pitch that just misses the inside corner One and no delivery. Now pitch runs in on him here, and all he can do is flare one foul off to the right side. The one-one home. This should end the inning as it's sent out to second. Harrison's got it. He'll whip this one to first in time, and that ends the inning. One, two, three, go the Marlins. This remains a five all ball game. Welcome back to South Florida all tied at five as you take a look at the game summary through the first six innings of play. So the lineup flips over and digging in Josh Harrison a couple of singles to his credit thus far. He's ready. Here's the first offering. High in the air down the right field line. Under it is Maven now as he pulls it in for the first out. Now batting. In now Adam Frazier. It was a fly out for him in his last trip. First delivery to him on the way. And he takes ball one. And a strike to even the count. One and one. Slider up that he gets a call on. The one two grounded softly to the right Moore has it and he'll flip it to the pitcher covering for the out. Up next for Pittsburgh. First baseman. John Bell. Digging in the switch hitter Josh Bell in his last at bat he popped out in foul ground. First pitch on its way. And this is taken outside for ball one. Rip down the first base line. And that is past him at first. It's a fair ball. He takes the turn and heads for second. And now he'll get into scoring position with two away. There's no question he's been struggling at the dish lately, trying to do anything to get himself going. So he's got to feel pretty good after that double. Not to take anything away from him, but I think I could have probably hit that pitch. Yeah, that's one of those gift pitches, not the location he was shooting for. In now, Sean Rodriguez. Here's a shot to left field and deep. Look at this. Gone! A two-run shot that gives them the lead. It's a two-run shot to straightaway left. Second home run early in the year, and they take a 7-5 lead.
Wow, he really hit that ball well. Put a great swing on it with great extension, and it sailed right out of here. How about it? Here's Jordy Mercer now. Jordy Mercer. As he'll lift it up in the air, this is back behind second. And Castro will make the catch, and that ends the inning. But the Pirates do get a couple here on this two-run home run. Get up and stretch. It's the Pirates seven and the Marlins five. So here's the cleanup hitter for Miami, Justin Bohr. He'll try and get something started in the home half of the seventh. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game, they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan of bloop and a blast? They could certainly use that right now. First offering on its way. Now this one hit hard out to right field by Bohr and deep. Busted. Ranging back. And that's a home run into the top tank. A solo shot for Justin Bohr. Sixth home run on the season for it, as it's now a one run game, seven to six now. Boy, this guy's hot right now. Hit a bomb yesterday and hit another tape measure shot today. When he gets hot, he hits him in bunches. This could be the beginning of one of those extended hot streaks. Standing in now, Tim Beckham. She'll take a look at the strike right down the middle. It's 0-1. No hits to this point. Good change up a swing and a miss and he set down on strikes for the second time today. This has not been a weekend to remember for him. He's just been completely lost at the plate flailing all over the place. Now that's his sixth strikeout of the series. They have really got him figured out. Into the box number 42 as the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball one and oh. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. The 1 0 misses for the second ball. That's right. Wait for your pitch. 2 0 count the pitch. Too tight with that one. 3 and 0. Walks are never good, but they're especially bad news late in games like this. It seems like they always come back to bite you. And he'll just make him throw one over here. Three and one. One pitch. Full count now. Three and two. Swing and a miss, and they come back from a 3-0 count to sit him down on strikes, and there are two gone. This tells me a lot about this guy. He's done a real nice job bouncing back from that home run to strike out the next two guys. Sometimes you're going to get taken deep, but it's all about how you respond that really matters. And next to the plate will be J.T. Riddle. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. He's two for three and looking for more here. And that 
pitch misses in the dirt and it's 2 and 0 oh now. That was a non competitive pitch right there and he finds himself behind 2 0 oh in this situation. He's going to have to locate something down the zone to get himself back in this count. Too high and it's 3 and 0. Oh. Three and one to the Marlins middle infielder. Hey, that 3 0 pitch might have been important for him right there. Regroup, get his mechanics back under him, and drive something down through the strike zone. Wouldn't throw the exact same pitch right here. Might want to cheat towards one of the corners. Come on, Marlins! There's the good fastball, and he can't catch up. Three and two. Bases are empty here with two men out. High pop up. Frazier is under it. He makes the play and that'll end the inning. Marlins get one back thanks to the solo home run. We'll march on to the eighth. It's now a 7 6 ball game. Ready now, Jordan Luplo. He lined out in his last trip, so looking for better fortunes here. First offering on its way. Slapped hard the opposite way. And a knock for him this time. He's two for four for the game. So the leadoff man is aboard to start out the inning. How about it? Mike Hilden. Striding in, Chris Bostic. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. First pitch coming, here it is. And he chased up and out of the zone, a swing and a miss. One count. Here's the pitch. Behind 0 and 2 now. Missed with a slider. Into the corner and slicing foul. Loop low aboard here at first with nobody out. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. That's the third time in this game he's gone down on strikes. Not the game he was hoping to have when he was taking batting practice, but at least his guys are ahead. Elias Diaz the next to hit. No balls and a strike to count. He's hitless in his two at bats so far. Comes set and the 0 1. Off the plate and in. It's a ball and a strike. Step off the rubber and go to first. And he'll get dirty, but he's back in safely. One out, one on in a one run game. And he fouls this one off. The one two is high and outside for a ball. Two two heading out towards shallow right Mabin is there and that's the second out of the inning. 
Gregory Polanco will get the call here as he'll hit for the pitcher. Number 42, Gregory Polanco. The fastball here is he'll take a look at ball one, one and oh. He's ready for his first at bat of this early season contest. Not close. It's 2 0. Oh. Polanco, or El Cafe, as he's sometimes referred to. He's a five year vet at the major league level. Two out with the man at first. Lays off a fastball, but it's over for a strike. Two and one. Yeah, right there, it's tough to be able to dive out over the plate. I know it's a pitch people think you can get to, but after you're pounded in twice, that ball looks like a foot outside. He's set, and the 2 1 pitch. Sinker stayed high, but called for a strike. The 2 2. High in the air into shallow left center. In comes the left fielder. He can't get there, so the inning will continue. Point zero. Anytime a lefty takes that pitch on the outer no, third and drives it the other way, you have to be awfully impressed. Yeah, you have to be. It reminds me of Will Clark back in the day taking that ball the other way. You have to be able to play with the whole field to have success in the big leagues. Josh Harrison stands in. Now he sends a routine fly ball out to straightaway center. Brinson will get there and he puts it away to retire the side. Pirates strand a couple. They'll try and hold him in the field now. It's seven to six. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Pirates, number 42, Kevin Seager. Into the box now, Lewis Brinson. It was a walk in his last trip. This thing's far from over, even though we're moving into the back end of this game. Only down by one. All they need to do is get this leadoff guy, and they're an extra base hit away from tying this thing up. Strike one to start the at bat. The 0 1 pitch. Gets the fastball by him here, and he's in control 0 and 2. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. Still no balls and two strikes. And he takes strike three called on the fastball, one gone. People always talk about how important getting the leadoff men on base is, and, and it's true. So in the eighth inning of a one-run game, that's a really nice job of attacking a hitter and sending him back. Martin Prado will pinch hit here, and he's the potential tying run. In on the hands a bit with the fastball, it's 1 0. And he's definitely off to a fast start in the early part of the season. The 1 0. It's laid off, but in there for strike one. You know, if I'm the hitter right here, I'm like, okay, you want to come get some early in the count? I was about to wait you out, but now game on. Here's the 1 1. Sliders in for a strike. The 1 and 2 pitch. And this is fouled at the plate. Bases are empty, one man out.
the middle. And that'll get on through into center, and he's got himself a one-out hit. So a base hit from the pinch hitter will send them back to the top of the order with one away in the inning. It's the best competition in all the sport, the pitcher against the batter right there. He fouled off multiple pitches, refused to go down. Not only did he get a knock, but he ran some pitch total up, too. Here's Cameron Mabin now. He'll look at a fastball too high for ball one. It's been a two for four effort for him so far in the ball game. Oh, on the ground at first. Can this be two? Oh, and he can't pick it up cleanly. And pretty fortunate here as they do wind up getting the out at first, although the runner will advance to second. So definite problems on that last play, and they'll hit the first baseman for the error. So striding in, JT Real Muto, as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. Trying to hold the lead, here's the delivery. And that misses for ball one. Prado stands at second with two gone. And that one stayed up a little high. Well, he's got a base open to use right here, and it looks like he might not be afraid to do that by the way he's pitching it. The 2 0 pitch. Swing and a miss just out in front of that fastball. Takes a fastball on the inside corner. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. Hit out towards second. Loved by Harrison. Throw on to first, and that error won't come back to haunt him after all as the inning is over. One left for Miami. Down a run in a tight one. It's seven to six. Severino Gonzalez enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. So stepping in, Adam Frazier. Two hits in four attempts to this point. First pitch on its way. Ninth Eight. inning underway now as the first pitch is taken for a cold strike. The wind up and the 0 1. Oh. And there's ball one. You know he wants that on the mound, especially if it would have made the count 0 and 2. Didn't get it though, so now you have to make another quality pitch on 1 and 1. A 1 and 1 count. Here's the pitch. A high fastball is in there. Gonzalez typically throws a lot of strikes coming in out of the bullpen, resulting in low walk totals, although he has been snake bitten by the home run ball at times in the past. One of the keys for this guy, Matt, is not being afraid to attack the strike zone. With that said, he is prone to giving up the home runs. I think one of the cause of that, Matty D, he leaves a lot of pitches up in the strike zone. He needs to be down in the zone when he's effective. So it was a swinging strike three. Adam Frazier is retired to kick off the ninth. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. A changeup that just catches the bottom of the zone for a strike. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right-hander is up and throwing. The 0-1 delivery. There's a fastball that just misses ball one. One run game here in the top of the ninth. Line to the right side. Oh, but he robs him on a super diving catch. That ball wasn't hit all that hard, but it had base hit written all over it until the infielder made a nice diving stab on that one.
Into the box now, Sean Rodriguez. As he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. So far, two for three in this one. Into his windup, here comes the 1 0. And there's a sinker that he just spits on as it misses low. Two out, nobody on. And a good eye that time to lay off the fastball. It's 3 and 0. If I'm managing this hitter right here, he doesn't even have to look down at the third base coach. You know he's got the green light. He's one of the best hitters in your lineup. Taking all the way, and it's 3 and 1 now. Into his motion. Here comes the three and one. Eight. Takes a high fastball for a strike. Three and two. Three two pitch. Wait. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Maben is there. And that ends the inning. Down in order go the Pirates as they still cling to a 7 6 lead. Felipe Rivero enters the game to finish this one off here in the bottom of the ninth. Here's Starlin Castro in prior matchups with Felipe Rivero. He's hitless in three at bats. Starlin Castro. Third baseman hugging the line here. Now the first pitch. And here's a slider that's nowhere close, and it's 1 0. The windup and the 1 0 pitch down the third baseline, but a foul ball, 1 and 1. It's 1 and 2. Hey, from a pitcher's standpoint, sometimes the greatest pitch is the slider that backs up. He got away with that one. But he wants that thing to bury down the way. The one two. There Tried to go. hold up there. Appeal down to first and no swing. It's ball two. The two two. And it's fouled away. Outside in a full count, three and two. A ball hits softly on a line to third. And this will be no problem over with third. And there's the a first down. The Digging in once again, Justin Bohr. It was a solo shot for him in his last at bat. The last at bat, Nettie D. We heard this guy's a good fastball hitter. He got a fastball and didn't miss it. We'll see if they pitch him a little bit differently this time and mix in some off speed pitches. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Next pitch, chopped foul right at home plate, and he's behind nothing and two now. Nothing and two count, and the pitch. And that is swung on and missed, and things are starting to look bleak here for the home nine. There are two away now. Looked to me like he had the right idea with the swing on that pitch, and he just didn't get the back of the zone in time. The pitch was away. He let it get deep, maybe trying to take it the other way, but it got too deep and was by him by the time his barrel could get in the correct position. Stepping in now, Tim Beckham. Up and in here as he had to bend out of danger. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. The 1 0 is looked at off the plate for a ball. The 2 0 doesn't hit the target. It's ball three. 
Number 42 would be next. And he'll just lay this one in there. Three and one. Now here's the pitch. Ground ball right side. Harrison has it. Throw to first to be in time for the final out. And the Pirates have taken the rubber match of this three-game set as this ball game is over. Hey, a great win for these guys as they wrap up another one. But a little bit of a sour note, though. Everyone has to head home, get on those computers, and get those taxes out before midnight. And this afternoon closes at a one-run game, 7-6 to six today. The Pirates jumped ahead in the seventh inning and never gave the lead back. Kyle Frick gets the win in relief, his second of the year. Felipe Rivero wraps it up for the save, his fourth of the season. So that's it for us this afternoon. For Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, and our entire crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, log on to theshownation.com.